ln 1 is always going to be 0. Log or ln of 1 is always 0. Just something you have to memorize. I'll show you later on how to get that, but that's always 0. First property. Second property, if you're taking a natural log or just even a log of something and you have two pieces multiplied, you can expand them to be this. When you take a log with what's inside the log, if it's two things multiplied, you can expand it and then make two logs or natural logs and add them. For this one, when you have a natural log of something to a power, it's kind of weird, but you can take that 2, that B, take it out front. And you get B out front, and now you have L and A. So you basically can just take that power, jump it out front, and leave the L and A. And the last power property is very similar to number 2. When you divide, what you do is you subtract. Again, I'll tell you where these come from later on. But those are the three prop four properties from there. All this is kind of going to build from. So number 26, all they're going to ask you to do is expand it. Spread it out, change it. And so what we do is we use the properties. Now, do you see right here, hey, I have a multiply of two things. So my first step is to, with a multiply, you separate it. So I now will have ln 3 plus ln e squared. We're not completely done because this we can't simplify. It's just ln 3. It's a decimal. We'll put it in a calculator. This one though, that 2 can jump out front. So this actually ends up being ln 3 plus 2 ln e. Now, one more thing, this L and E actually is one. That should have probably been one of these properties, but that in itself is one, and I'll tell you in a little bit where that comes from, but that is one. So I now would have L and three plus two times one. So my answer is simply L and three plus two. Now that's not L and five. Got it? That's ln3 plus 2. You probably could have been okay right here, but technically this is your answer. For this one, all you're going to do is divide. So what we do is it's just like this one. So we have ln1 divide means minus. Kind of like a division. It looks like a minus. I don't know. One way to remember it. ln e. Okay. From there... Do we know what ln1 is? ln1 is 0. And I said ln e is 1. So 0 minus 1 is? That is negative 1. All right, number 34. We're going to, instead of expanding, we're going to condense this. So. The first thing is, I'm going to leave the 3 over 2 to the end. I'm going to write it right here. I have a minus and a minus. So I'm going to focus, first of all, just on this right here, the first two. A minus, we said, was a division. So this is going to be ln x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. So I first condensed those first two. Now, I have 3 over 2. I have a minus. So if I minus, if I take this and divide by this, won't this drop into the denominator? Yeah. <clears throat> so now I have ln <coughs> x squared plus 1. And on the bottom, this x minus 1 is going to drop down with this one. All right. <clears throat> now, everything inside is condensed. It's ln something. But this last property, if we have something in front, doesn't it go up to the power? 
We're just doing all these properties backwards. So this can actually become a power. So I now have ln, and I got x squared plus 1. Now, hopefully you can see that's a difference in squares. I'm just going to foil it just to see something different. So minus 1 if you foiled it out. All right. And that would be to the 3 over 2 power. And that would probably be a decent answer, but one more step would probably be Is that a square root? Since the two is on the bottom, it's square root. And this is going to be x squared plus 1 over x, min x squared minus 1. And all of this inside would be cubed. That would be your final answer. That one would probably be just as good. Either of these would work. They're both good. I'm going to circle that one. And the last one, we're going to do some limits. It doesn't have to do with these properties as much. We're just going to do a limit real quick. It's not that hard. First thing, for all limits, even though it's from the negative side, plug in 6, what do you get? Zero. Zero. What you need to know about logs is when you plug in, you cannot get zero with a log. You cannot put a negative or zero into a log, natural log. They have to be positive values. So I can't plug it in. Now, I don't have a method to do ln, like a factoring or any kind of method. So basically, I can't plug it in. I don't have an analytical way of doing it, an algebraic. So my last step is just to graph it or make a substitution chart. So what I do is I come from one side. So we're coming from the negative side, correct? So let's plug in, make a little table. And if we plug in, say, uh, 5, and then maybe 5.5. Anyways, I can't plug in 6, but anyways, if we plug in 5, this would be ln what? 1. When you plug in 5.5, you have ln 1 half, correct? Now, ln 1, what does that equal? Isn't that 0? What's ln 1 half? Well, isn't that ln 1 minus ln 2? Oops, ln 1 minus ln 2. And ln 1, isn't that 0? So isn't that going to be a negative? It's negative something. So if I'm from 0 to a negative, most likely this is an asymptote and not a whole. Are you okay with that? So if I went from 0 to a negative, do you understand my graph's going downhill? So my answer would probably be negative infinity. Because it's going downhill. I know you don't know properties of natural logs quite yet, but just trust me.